Hello and welcome. Just before we branched off to explore transformations, we were working on the concept of dimensions. We went as far as to suggest that a dot could represent zero dimensions. A line has a single dimension, we describe as a linear measurement used for length or distance. And we introduce why we often need a second dimension when we're trying to measure the area or surface of an object. Area can quickly be found by simply multiplying the two linear measurements of a rectangular shape. Area equals length times width. In the next few episodes, we're going to dive into the third dimension. We live in a 3D world. Having two eyes looking forward gives us the ability to see depth. Each eye delivers a slightly different perspective, which our brains quickly compute to suggest how far away objects appear. This is depth perception, or a third dimension. It's also a bit like how 3D movies are created. The filmmakers lay down two different images as seen here. The cool glasses give our brains a chance to merge the images. The illusion of 3D is created on a 2D screen. Adding a third dimension with our measurements opens up a whole new category. Measuring length and area are very important, but sometimes we need to know how much space something takes up. Since everything in our world is made of matter, all objects take up space. Or in the case of liquids and gases, fill the space of the shape they occupy. Like a beverage container and swimming pool or hot air balloons and our lungs. The amount of space something takes up is called its volume, not to be confused with the level of sound. Let's explore what 3D looks like with the shapes we've been learning about. This gets a little tricky since you're seeing this on a 2D screen. We rely on lines to create the perspective we're looking for. We will add lines to this square to represent depth, our third dimension. Once we get the idea, we can add depth and perspective to any rectangular shape. The amount of depth is changed by altering the length of the line's angle backwards. And we get perspective by changing the orientation of the shape. You can see that these objects use shading to help illuminate the effect, much like what you'd see in any 3D graphic work. And quite simply, we have made a box. We can add a third dimension to other common shapes. If we extend the outside or circumference of a circle backwards, we create a cylinder. Cylinders are a common shape for holding liquids, and it's a shape that has great strength for holding compressed gases. If we were able to rotate a circle on an axis, we would scribe out a shape called a sphere. Spheres are, of course, everywhere. We play games with them, exercise on them, and ride on one shaped by the powerful force of gravity. We've been trying to help point out that the things we're learning about are really just things we've discovered about our world. Length, area, and volume are just part of our surroundings. Because of that, the examples abound when we tune into recognizing them. We often stop noticing the things that are commonplace. But take a moment or two and try to look at things with a fresh 3D perspective. Perhaps you could even think out of the box. In a future episode, you'll learn how to calculate the volumes of various 3D objects. Our goal here has been to just get familiar with them. Next, we'll have a look at a category of shapes called prisms. <laughs>